Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be doing a quick review of this unit that we're finishing up, which is the analysis of one quantitative variable. Uh, two things to remember about this unit. First, when you talk about quantitative data, it's going to be a meaningful number. So it tends to have units connected to it. You can have a difference calculated for it uh, and an average. Now, the other thing to remember is that this whole chapter dealt with descriptive statistics, which means we didn't do any inferences. That's future chapters. Stay tuned. So for descriptive statistics, you have two options. You have numeric summaries and graphical displays. So for the numeric summaries that we dealt with, we started with percentiles and the five number summary. Remember that those two things require that your data be ordered because when you describe them, for example, with percentiles, you have K percent of the data values that are less than or equal to that Kth percentile. So for example, if I was in the 70th percentile, 70% 70 of the data is less than or equal to that. So with the uh, five number summary, we talked about how those five numbers, the minimum Q1, the median Q3, and the maximum, they break the data up into 25% chunks because the Qs stand for quarters. So Q1 has one quarter of the data or 25% of the data below it. The median has two quarters or 50% of the data below it. Q3 has three quarters or 75% of the data below it which also means we talked about that those are uh, those three numbers are actually specific percentiles. So Q1 could also be called the 25th percentile. The median can be called the 50th percentile and Q3 can be called the 75th percentile because of what percent of data is below it. So those measurements, percentiles and the five number summary require that your data be in order. Then we talked about the graphical display for the five number summary, which is the box plot. We looked at lots of different box plots, outliers, and where those values for the five number summary were. And we discussed how if there are outliers, it's going to be either minimum or maximum, depending on where it is um, in the location of the box plot. Then we also looked at histograms and we decided that the shape of a distribution is easier to tell with a histogram as opposed to a box plot. Um, and then we discussed how to actually describe a distribution. So remember there were four areas to talk about. It was the center, uh, the variability, the shape, and then outliers. And when we discussed the center, we added in a new measurement that doesn't require data to be ordered, but that was called the mean or average. And when you calculate an average, you do it the same way for a sample as you would for a population. We focus mostly here on the measurement called X bar, which is a statistic. It is a measurement or the sample mean. Uh, so with that, it would be calculated the same way as the population mean, which we denoted with mu. However, then we went on to talk about some measurements of variability, which included deviation, which is the distance that values in a data set are from the mean. We talked about standard deviation and we talked about variance. And in those standard deviation and variance measurements, I discussed how they are not calculated the same way for a sample as they are for a population. So we just focused on the sample measurements and remember the notation for uh, variance is S squared and for the standard deviation is S. And we said that we liked that standard deviation measurement the best because it has the same units as uh, your X bar would. Or so then we continued on and talked about the normal distribution and some characteristics of it, which includes that it's symmetric, it's bell-shaped, it's unimodal. Um, Technically, the lower and upper bound are negative and positive infinity, respectively. And then we talked about how to utilize that normal distribution with something called the empirical rule, which breaks that curve up into three separate chunks that are one, two, and three standard deviations from the mean, where the mean is always the center of that normal distribution. And with that uh, one, two, or three cutoff points, we have 68, 95, and 99.7% respectively. 
And then we talked about how it's a nice snapshot of the data, but that it doesn't always give you a very precise location. So I showed you how to calculate z-squares to be able to figure out how many standard deviations you are from the mean if you're not exactly one, two, or three. So then we talked about bi-group analysis and how to compare groups. And I also showed you how to make those uh, bi-group analysis through the programming package R. So we talked about how to compare box plots for like males and females, and we talked about how to compare histograms for males and females. And the benefit of that is that it helps you to know if their centers are similar and if the variability is similar, which is why you would separate groups to be able to compare them. And for all of these things, we looked at how to do this analysis with the programming package R, and that's it. We did a lot. It was a big unit. But we've covered everything. Hopefully we've covered it well enough. If this review uh, makes you confused, make sure that you go back to the videos that are in this uh, playlist so that you can view things uh, with more detail. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in future videos where our next unit is going to be talking about sample to sample variability. See you there.